welcome to DC Today. It's now Wednesday, Valentine's Day, February the 14th. And it's great to be with you here from our Newport Beach office studio. Um, following yesterday's move lower in markets that I think both David and I wrote about as being a little bit flash in the pan based on some CPI numbers that were hardly indicative of something drastically changing. Of course, today we get a recovery day and markets are up. The Dow closed up 151 points on the day. The 10 year uh, cooled off a little from yesterday's backup in rates. Uh, interest rates were down about six basis points on tens, closed at 425, 426. And overall, um, a fairly good day in markets, broadly speaking. The um, SP 500 actually retook its 5,000 level, which uh, Again, is always surreal to me. I um, haven't been able to talk about it yet because we lost that level yesterday. But um, I remember distinctly intraday on March 6th of 2009 when it was um, uh, intraday was 666. So to have it back about 5,000 both makes me feel old, but then also um, is, is neat to see. And again, yesterday's numbers were really not that bad with inflation. So um, I said that, David said that, and then today, Hal reiterated that. Janet Yellen reiterated that, and then another Fed president out of Chicago, Austin Goolsby, uh, reiterated that. So, so Powell yesterday, uh, same day as the inflation data came out, said that it was basically what he was expecting. And Austin Goolsby today said that, you know, this data is never going to be what I said, which was never going to be in a straight line. So there's going to be months in which you get ups and downs, but overall, there's a lot of progress being made. And with how restrictive interest rates are, um, there is a risk to waiting too long. And so that was considered dovish. And then same thing, Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary, said something similar today that uh, we're making good progress and there's there's not not a lot to, to, to worry about with whatever yesterday's worry was, which shouldn't have been much. So all that to say, down day yesterday was um, a 13 to 1 negative to, to positive decline advance ratio. So it's a decent sell off. But again, credit spreads didn't move, and then you get volatility that comes back in line the following day. Um, not something that I'm overly worried about. The, the actual fundamentals of markets in earnings, which is what I care about much more, have been still quite positive. We're now roughly 70% through earnings season for Q4. And we're tracking, at, well, so far with a 30% with a left to go, we're at about a 9% growth rate on earnings for 2023. So with more to go, I assume that'll hit somewhere in the 10, 10s, maybe even an 11% growth range for the year of 23. And something similar is actually expected for 2024. We're looking at about a 10% expected earnings uh, growth rate, which I think is, is going to come down a little bit as revisions go on throughout the year. That's just my feeling on it. Uh, but still, we're, it's positive nonetheless. There's a positive backdrop with uh, fundamentals and earnings, um, which is what matters. The margins inside of S&P have come down a little from where they were, but they're still quite healthy. They're at about 16.7%. They're holding in there fine. Companies are making money. Uh, that's what you want to see to have ultimately uh, good stock prices. And frankly, where markets are priced at this point, we need that. We need that growth just to rationalize the, you know, the 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 multiple in the market that we have right now. So those those things I'm I'm paying attention to. Um, in, inside of those numbers, industrials still tend to look at look to be the leader at this point, which is nice to see. Um, and then I, I did say this yesterday, um, inside of that inflation number, we've talked about it before, but there's um, a shelter cost in there of owner's equivalent rent. Um, I guess the only thing I wanted to, to note, which I read today, was that the gap between what I was talking about, which is the actual rent index, let's call it the, the recent Zillow rent index, and then where this number is inside of CPI, um, the gap right now is as wide as it's been since 1995. So I thought that was somewhat notable. In other words, it, it, the Fed knows that too. That shelter cost coming down is going to get them to the two handle on CPI that they need anyways. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I added in a section uh, of a common question, but I've gotten several times the last week in there about how we deal with complexity in transferring outside accounts. Um, I think most listeners and most readers and, and certainly clients know that we're, we have a growing business and so we're constantly moving money into uh, the custodian that we choose to use, which is Fidelity. And the question I get is, you know, how do we manage that? Is it 
Um, is it too complex? It, you know, with hundreds of positions coming over, are we just selling all of them on day one? And so my response is to just uh, hopefully help readers understand that no, it's it's definitely done surgically. So every case is just dramatically different, and so there isn't a standard answer. But um, almost always, we're consolidating accounts, meaning making people's lives simpler. We're bringing those assets over in kind. There's no cost or tax ramifications for doing that. We're allowing all that cost basis information to mature in the account so we can see it and we can analyze it. And then, yes, we are going through to reposition portfolios to align them the way that they should be. And in, involved in that is, is replacing some with others uh, inside of the portfolio. But at the end of it all, it is done to dramatically improve the situation and it isn't something that is complex for us at all. So if it seems daunting for some where they have, you know, 14 different accounts at Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity and, you know, Morgan Stanley or something like that. For us, it's just something we do all day long and it's very seamless. The whole process doesn't take more than a couple of days. Um, so if there's any more questions on that, feel free to reach out if I can provide more color there. Tomorrow, you have a more exciting day uh, with data, at least for me. Um, we have uh, manufacturing data out of the Empire Survey and also the Philly Fed Index, uh, uh, Philly Fed Manufacturing Survey, which will be good. There's some jobless claims numbers out tomorrow, uh, retail sales and industrial production. So good amount to chew on through tomorrow that I'll, I'll get to write about. And um, with that, I'm going to let you go for the night. And I hope that uh, uh, you're able to, to spend a little extra time with those loved ones on Valentine's and uh, reach out with more questions. Thanks as always. Mm -hmm.